a beneficiary. The good thing about what President Buhari did is that uh, he promised that the over 800 people that died in the process of waiting for this money, their next of kin will be paid. And as I'm talking to you, they have been paid. Information is power. Everyone wants power. So feel powerful with the NTA News mobile app, the one-stop information center, real news at your fingertip. Be the first to report by uploading first-hand information on the U-Report link. And be the first to know by simply clicking on any of the links on the sidebar for headlines, domestic and foreign news, economy, security, politics, sports, and more. Stream live on your smartphone and tablets and stay connected. It's pretty easy. Simply download NTA News app from your Google Play Store and you're good to go. NTA News mobile app, your access to real-time information. watching NTA Nigerian Television Authority For more information and news updates visit our website at www.nta.ng or you can follow us on Twitter at NTA News Now or you can like us on Facebook at NTA Network News Stay connected on our YouTube channel at www. <laughs> Hello. Have our unity schools become victims of the challenges in the country? We will interrogate this tonight. Good evening and welcome to Weekend File. It's my pleasure to host you once again. There was a time in the history of this country when it became imperative to strengthen the nation and her people, irrespective of religion, ethnicity, creed or belief. That was when special secondary schools were established to provide good education while fostering unity and ties among Nigerian children from different backgrounds. Then they were called federal government colleges, which later metamorphosed into unity schools. Admissions into these schools are highly competitive. Hence, only the best brains gain entrance into them after sitting for entrance examination. Uh, the schools have since increased from four, as at the time they were established over 45 years ago, to 104 with some states having up to four special schools. Uh, these are schools many parents wish their children could attend as reliable places of educational formation and basic capacity development. Some observers say Nigeria is some schools away from actualizing uh, the much desired national unity. But today, 
it seems that uh, standard in some of the unity schools is falling due to lack of adequate or misappropriation of development funds, poor infrastructure, insecurity, and inadequate teaching equipment, all of which led waste to what was once the beacon of learning and unity in Nigeria. We will learn much more about the unity schools and uh, their roles in nurturing friendships that span lifetimes. Tonight, I shall be speaking with Jonathan Mbaka, Director of Federal Quality Assurance, Federal Ministry of Education. I am Kirin Umayo. Let's do it again today on a platform where national issues are dissected. The Weekend File, your weekend companion. Thank you for tuning in. We begin with the news. <laughs> The famous Mapu Hall in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital, came alive as the people came out in their numbers to receive the APC presidential campaign team. In his speech, President Muhammad Buhari assured them that Southwest, like other geopolitical zones, is so dear to his administration and that special attention will be given to them to sustain the ongoing development in the area. Political correspondent Salihu Ablahi has the report. Overwhelmed with the large turnout of people from within and around Oyo State, APC stalwarts, including the party's national leader, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, took to the microphone to track their voice through the admiration of the crowd. <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari said the only way the people can reciprocate government kind gesture is to take advantage of government numerous programs and give them another opportunity to govern in the interest of the country and the citizenry. The Minister of Transportation and the Minister of Works and Housing are working very hard to make sure that the railway between Lagos and Ibadan and the road are done by the end of this year. I congratulate you for that, and I congratulate the rest of Nigeria. And the investment we made in agriculture in terms of fertilizer and other inputs have failed greatly. We have now stopped importation of rice virtually, and we serve hundreds of millions of dollars which we can put in infrastructure. We are going to do the roads. We are going to do the power. Other speakers, including the party's national chairman, Adams Oshomole, urged the people to make wise choice and vote for APC, whose agenda is to harness the nation's resources for social economic prosperity. It is not over until it is over. So you come out and vote against privatization of Nigeria and vote to continue with a power program. Vote to continue with the construction of rail and the construction of roads. When you do that, in another four years, Nigeria will not be the same again. This election is between the progressives and the retrogressives. It is between development with healing and development with stealing. They urged the electorate to replicate the show of support through the ballot box come February 16 in favor of President Muhammad Buhari, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. And meanwhile, the Alafi of Oyo and Chairman of your State Council of Traditional Rulers, Oba Lamido Adeyemi, is assuring President Muhammad Buhari that the voting population across the land of the Fests can neither be bought or negatively influenced by those who do not mean well for the country. Oba Adeyemi said this while receiving the President on a courtesy visit alongside other paramount rulers in the state. The State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports.
It was an exciting moment to behold as the presidential campaign team of the governing APC, led by President Muhammad Buhari, arrived Ibad on the capital of Oyo State on a vote-seeking crusade. Indeed, the Buhari passion was rekindled as party enthusiasts remarkably demonstrate sincere commitment towards consolidating the gains of the change agenda in the next level. And for the first time in history, those of the sacred House of Chiefs were flanked open for a sitting president of Nigeria. For the monarchs and the people of Oyo, President Muhammad Buhari is highly revered as a man of enormous integrity, hence the befitting welcome in his honor at this monument of historical significance. The edifice was Nigeria's first parliamentary building where motion for the nation's independence was moved. We have 103 royal fathers. They are all here as a sign of solidarity and appreciation for the good work you have done and we continue to do for the next four and a half years. The Alafin of Oyo, Obalamidi Adeyemi, was full of appreciation for the Nigerian leader for believing in the country and working selflessly towards preserving his future for the good of all. The people of Oyo State, he said, are highly satisfied with ongoing efforts at taking Nigeria to the next level and will resist attempts at jeopardizing the promising agenda of national salvation. Mr. President, you are welcome to the center politics, to the center of refining politics. People who reason, who see agenda, who see program, and follow program. The Royal State electorate cannot be bought. President Muhammad Buhari thanked the monarchs for the honor done to him as well as the tremendous support he enjoys in the state. He reassured the people of sustained efforts at freeing Nigeria from the bondage of the selfish few who do not mean well for the country. So please, through you to our constituencies, we appeal for understanding and support. We assure you that we will not abuse trust and we will not spare anybody found to have abused trust. President Muhammad Buhari was in Ibadan as part of the nationwide campaign rally by the governing All Progressives Congress. In Ibadan, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And more on political campaigns. We now join uh, Salihu Abdullahi as he brings us uh, up, up to date uh, the APC rally in Oshubo. President Muhammad Buhari commended the people of Oshun State for voting APC in the last governorship election in the state and want them to keep the momentum come February 16th presidential election to ensure success of the APC. I don't have anything new to say other than to remind you the condition we met this country and what we promised during campaigns 2015 and remind you very quickly of the progress we have made on security that's fighting Boko Haram. They used to hold at least 17 local governments in Yobe. Borno and other parts of Nusis. Physically, they are not holding any local government now. I sincerely congratulate you for electing APC governor of reason. And I am campaigning for senators, for members of the House of Reps, and the House of Assembly, please bear with us. APC is going to work for you and for the country. 
APC stalwarts took turn to evaluate the successes of the Buhari administration in line with the change agenda and the need to join hands with the governing APC, which is promoting progressive politics and governance. You have fought the war to keep Nigeria together. What is their own contribution? In every department of the game, Mr. President, you are outstanding. The law of corruption, the president has done so well. Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. And back in Abuja, President Muhammadu Buhari has reassured the FCT community that his administration will continue to do what is necessary to give the area a better sense of belonging as worthy hosts of the nation's seat of government. The president gave the assurance to representatives of traditional institutions, executive members of the area councils, leaders of youth and trader groups, as well as non-governmental organizations on a solidarity visit. He said efforts will be sustained in the completion of critical infrastructural projects and new ones initiated uh, for job creation and improved standard of living. Um, uh, whatever uh, the center can do to rapidly continue the um, identified infrastructural development of FCT, it will be given priority. President Buhari commended the FCT community for embracing farming as a truly paying business and also promised that they will not regret it. The president equally made a case for more involvement of the leadership in maintaining peace, law and order. On his part, the FCT minister, Mohamed Musabelo, who led the delegation in the company of the owner of Abaji, commended the president for restoring peace in the area appointing indigenous people of the FCT into key government uh, positions while also completing abandoned projects scattered across the city. A love for you and for their appreciation of what you stand for. And what do you stand for? You stand for the welfare of people, for the security of people, for good governance, for financial prudence, and above all, for anti-corruption. We therefore remain committed to support this administration today and always to take this country to the next level. We pray God to deliver the country from the hand of the selfish and mysterious hand of the evils. Now away from politics, judicial officers have been urged to discharge their duties diligently with the fear of God in order to protect and uphold the integrity of the judiciary. The acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, made the appeal while swearing in chairman and members of the election petition tribunals for the 2019 general elections. Ali Tokor was there for us. This is ideal and timely for the constituted chairman and members of the election petition tribunals to swear on allegiance to adjudicate with justice on the post-election matters that may arise in the upcoming elections. The inauguration of the 250 members of the tribunal is the first official assignment of the acting chief justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Muhammad, who says the oath is an ethical undertaking to justice as well as upholding rule of law. With high hopes and expectations, the new acting chief justice of Nigeria urged the chairman and members of the tribunal to carry out their duties without fear or favor and to also rise in defense of the judiciary. The judiciary is in a trying time. You must, and I repeat, you must, stand to protect and uphold the integrity of this arm of government. The panel consists of National Assembly, Governorship and State Assembly Election Petition Tribunals. In Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. Meanwhile, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has described as unfortunate the decision by the PDP to suspend its campaigns over the suspension of the Chief Justice of uh, the Federation. President Muhammad Buhari uh, is saying that the President acted in line with an order issued by a competent court of jurisdiction in the land. The Minister said this in the Laurie Anthony Forsing reports. He suspended the uh, 
chief justice of Nigeria, is he a member of uh, the PDP? Why is the PDP carrying more than the crime more than the they believed. Reacting to the People's Democratic Party's suspension of its presidential campaign over Justice Walter Onoget's suspension, the Information and Cultural Minister, Lai Mohammed, wondered why the party would want to lose sleep over the matter. On the outcry that has trailed the CJN's suspension, the minister appealed to Nigerians to excuse sentiment and look at the matter dispassionately. He, however, expressed disappointment with a section of the media who seemed to be looking the other way over the issue. I've read all kinds of editorials today, you know, branding the president, you know, dictatorial, for the simple reason that he suspended the CGN. The president was acting on an order of a court of competent jurisdiction that so directed him. Where in the world would the chief justice of a country fail to declare his assets, admit that he actually failed to declare the asset, will be confronted with evidence that millions of dollars were traced to his, his or her account, and the only defense will be, I actually forgot, it was a mistake. And then that same chief, ju chief justice will be allowed to preside over the judiciary. In Ilan Kwara State, Anthony Forson, NTA News. In its own reaction, the Buhari Media Organization has commended President Muhammad Buhari's decision to suspend the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onegan. A statement by the group chairman, Ni Akinsiji, and Secretary Cassidy Madweke says they, it signifies a conscious shift of policy to fast track the fight against anti-graft war. The BMO said President Muhammad Buhari had, had no alternative but to respect a valid suspension order issued by the Code of Conduct Tribunal in line with the President's vow to respect the rule of law, pending final determination of the case against the suspended Chief Justice. The group consequently urges Nigerians across the country to rally round the President as his critical time in the fight against corruption and ignore attempts by the opposition People's Democratic Party and its presidential candidate to obfuscate the issue with the view to a scoring political point. Now, reactions have continued to throw the suspension of Justice Water on organ. Uh, Najatu Tijani interviewed a cross section of residents in Abuja who had mixed views. There is no way an arrowhead of judiciary for that matter, who has the constitutional mandate to protect the, the, the law, and who has the constitutional mandate to lead by example, who now found one thing. Because mind you, this CJ, by position of CJ, he is the one that saw in the president of the Federal Republic into office. So it's not a small position. And being it that it may, if you are in that position, definitely you have to be seen to be corrupt free. Everything they say the law will take in co uh, the cost. So what the Mr. President do is not it's not bad. Step aside. Why the corruption or the uh, what about the the whole case is going on? When you see that it's not guilty, there is a way of restarting it again. Well, what I see in what Mr. President does is not a bad thing. Just if I say you that go to equity, must go with a clean hand. So. of corruption, they are really fighting corruption, and we have seen some changes in the government. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is there to study the conflicting judgments on the participation or otherwise of the APC candidates from Zamfara State in the next month's general elections. INEC Chairman Professor Mahoud Yakubu stated this in an interview in Abuja, Mir Ogudi reports. Two courts of the same jurisdiction, one asking INEC not to accept the APC candidates from Zamfara State for the next month's general elections, another compelling INEC to accept. It is a victory for everybody. Dramas in the courtroom. INEC is really boxed to the center. We have always operated on the principle that if courts of coordinate jurisdiction make a contradictory pronouncement on the same subject, 
will obey the latest in time. But in the case of Zamfara, the two judgments were delivered the same day. So, so they are within the same time frame. But we'll see uh, once we study the uh, full judgments and the reasoning, we'll take a decision. We'll always obey court orders. Despite all these distractions and less than just three weeks to the elections, INEC is however set financially and logistics wise for a smooth exercise devoid of any malpractice. We requested the executive for the sum of 189 billion naira to prosecute the elections and every cobble of 189 billion has been released to the commission. But my assurance to all candidates and all parties is that we are not a political party. We have no interest in candidates and parties. We are only interested in our processes and procedures. We will never compromise the 2019 elections. Uneasy really lies on the head that wears the crown. But the INEC boss, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, says he is well prepared for the responsibilities that come with the crown. Mie Ogide, Antinis. And thank you, Mayor, for that report. Now, the Akwa Ibom State All Progressives Congress Campaign Council has observed with the dismay insinuations in some quarters that its governorship candidate, Obong Insima Ekere, was sacked as managing director of NDDC. According to the council, such insinuations are not uh, only mischievous, but a ploy uh, by Governor Udom Emmanuel's sympathizers to uh, parry away attention from the abysmal failure of the PDP in the state. A press statement from the council signed by SM Ayibo shows that uh, his resignation was to enable him to concentrate on his governorship ambition. Now to security. The Air Task Force of Operation Lafayette Dole has destroyed a terrorist hideout and neutralized some uh, terrorists at uh, Kaikula a settlement about 100 kilometers northwest of Mongino in northern Brunei state. A statement by the Director of Public Relations and Information, Ibukunle Daramola, says the operation was conducted on Friday, January 25, on the heels of credible intelligence surveillance, indicating that the village was being used as a staging area for terrorist activities from where the terrorists assemble to launch attacks against their own troops' location. And consequently, uh, two Alpha Jet aircrafts were scrambled to attack the hideout, thereby recording a successful hit on the target, leading to the destruction of some of the structures, as well as uh, the neutralization of some of the terrorists. You are watching Weekend File. Now, Unity Schools were established to create future leaders who must have learned much about the diversity of the country from their peers of different ethnic and religious backgrounds. Are these special secondary schools still in their glorious days? We'll find out in our correspondence report coming up after this break. Democratically affords a level playing field for everyone who carries the will and courage to lead a people in the right direction. I wish to call on women to go and spread the good news and accomplishment of the present administration. Women inevitably are the right source to pave this path that can bring good governance, structural stability, rapid economic growth and basic human rights to all its citizenry. There is no better time than now to experience their prowess in this era when women all over the world are showing that they have the right tools to build a nation. The Buhari-led administration and APC have aligned with its purpose to involve women with the right vision. The idea is not just for participation, but inclusive participation. We can exert more power than we would have individually in garnering the majority of registered women and youth voters to vote for the Buhari Oshibanjo team come 2019. This is what change is all about. This is the vision of the All Progressives Congress. This is for a new Nigeria. The entire people of Kebi State, under the leadership of Maishin Kafa, the executive governor of Kebi State, Senator Atiku Bagudu, are thanking Mr. President Muhammad Buhari and his entourage for coming to Kebi State for his campaign rally. Mr. President, we are solidly behind you to move Nigeria to the next level. Long live Nigeria, long live Kebi State. This message is from Buhari Atiku Campaign Organization. 
Alhaji Sani Dodudu, Chairman, Information and Publicity Announcer. The candidates for presidential town hall co-production between Daria Media and NTA, supported by the MacArthur Foundation. Kingsley Mogalu and running mate Uma Getso of the Young Progressive Party. Mohamedou Buhari and running mate Yemi Oshimbajo of the All Progressives Congress. Omoyele Showare and running mate Rabiu Ahmed Rufai of the African Action Congress. Atiku Abubakar and running mate Peter Obi of the People's Democratic Party. Moderator, Padria Ahmed. Town Hall Venue, Sheraton Hotel, Abuja. Next Town Hall, Wednesday 30th January 2019, with the candidates of the People's Democratic Party. Party from 8 to 10 p.m. The candidates will be broadcast live on NTA and other partner TV and radio stations as well as streamed online on NTA and DTV.media. If you are over 18 and want to be part of the audience, apply online at daria.media or use the hashtag NGTheCandidates or participate online using the hashtag NGTheCandidates. As the 2019 elections draw near, Remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your kids as the elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who would want to put them in harm's way while their own children are in comfortable homes and schools at home and abroad. Let's join hands to make 2019 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. When I was a little girl, I loved spending time with mum and grandma cleaning the house. I was so excited to sing in the choir. And your shirts are always so white. I knew what mum's secret was. Today, I'm a modern woman that still trusts the secret passed down to me. It's Jig, of course. The original trusted bleach, which can be used all around your house for amazing results. Shh, it's a little secret. It's no secret. It's Jig's best ever extra whitening power. Just Jig. I'm an only child, and um, I grew up as such uh, from an extremely poor background. The early morning, I would fetch water for the family, then go to school, come back from school, then take the cattle uh, for rearing. The cattle was not our own, but it was a wealthier neighbor's own, who will now any exchange give us some grains uh, to feed uh, for the farm. I believe in one Nigeria where all our people have equal opportunities. We must be the hope of the common man for the common good of the commonwealth of Nigeria. This message is brought to you by our Moments Group. Uh, thank you for uh, staying with us. And now, uh, news just reaching out says that the federal government says that it welcomes the prevailing keen interest and the partnerships for successful elections and a peaceful Nigeria, but not allow any meddling in the affairs 
of the country. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garbashi, who says government rejects any interference or perception management that promotes uh, apprehension. Citizens distrust or undermines the transparency and acceptability of the outcomes of the country's electoral process. Garaba Shehu says Nigeria is confident of its electoral processes uh, with a tremendous support by the federal government to the electoral umpire in uh, border its independence and resources needed to accomplish a free and fair election. The federal government assures citizens and the global community that it will assiduously promote the will and the right of Nigerians to choose and elect their leaders without pressure or assistance from persons or entities that are not constitutionally empowered to participate in the process. Now, part of the vision of the founding fathers in uniting the country is the establishment of unity schools as a means of fostering national unity and cohesion through the coming together of students from diverse ethnic and religious backgrounds. Uh, this vision was achieved especially at the outs uh, outset. But things began to change with the passage of time. In this report, Ablahi Musa Suleja uh, takes a look at the impact of this initiative in national unity and cohesion. Unity schools otherwise known as the federal government colleges were established five decades ago with the aim of integrating and grooming future leaders in both the public and private sectors of Nigeria with the mindset of fostering national unity and cohesion. This, to a certain extent, is achieved as the children who come from different parts of the country at their tender age live, learn, play together in an ideal education environment and pass out after spending five or six years as the case may be. Ayanagua people will, for example, find his or herself in Sokoto and Maduguri people gains admission into the Unity School in Yenogua, Owori, Delta State. That way, those students grew up with the feelings of the oneness of Nigeria in them. We have also come in, okay, in the last 10 years, the association has been working very hard to mobilize Nigerians going to schools, to volunteer the services, to volunteer their resources, and serve as models to other Nigerians. At present, the country has 104 federal government colleges with challenges to do with facilities and admission of students into these schools, not in accordance with the national spread as it used to be. Because people can come from Sokoto to go to my state and school, and from my state to another place. So people cross, and that's why it's the best way. If such unity school can be revised again in these days, I think it will solve our differences. So it brings us closer to ourselves. There's no disunity in anybody. We are one and we are one Nigeria. Nigerians are of the view that if the original concept of establishing the unity schools can be adhered to, fraternal relations, cohesion, and national integration are guaranteed. Abdullah Musa Sleja. NTA News. For over a century, King's College Lagos has been grooming young Nigerian boys from diverse ethnic, religious, and socio-cultural backgrounds into responsible adults for leadership roles. Uh, the school and its female counterpart, Queen's College, are among the 104 unity colleges spread across the country to promote unity and national integration. Jane Ojuku gives us an insight into how both colleges are faring on their mandate. King's College, popularly called KC, has remained a breeding ground for social and intellectually sound minds. The Emir of Kano, Senator Udoma Udo Udoma, and Dr. Sonny Kuku are among the prominent old boys of the Premier College who are making remarkable contributions in various fields of endeavor. How did the school fare in instilling the right values of love and tolerance among its products? I went to King's College. I don't even know anything like uh, and someone is an Igbo person or someone is a uh, Yoruba or someone. I mean, it's that the value system we got from there was beyond ethnicity. The critical question is whether the school is still proactive in upholding the vision of its founding fathers. 
Case College as one of the Unity Colleges admits children from all over the Federation, regardless of their background, and uh, the admission is geographically spread. Most of the teachers that taught me are still here, and I work with them. And so it's a very great experience. Everyone gets to interact with people of different cultures, religions, beliefs. Queen's College, like its counterpart, has been passing on the torch for the Nigerian girl to excel and contribute meaningfully to nation building. And we try to instill in our students the values of honesty, truthfulness, loyalty, being your brother's keeper. So my school, Queen's College, has done a lot when it comes to bringing that bond in making sure that there is no form of um, tribalism in school. By the time you get outside, you don't really have to struggle to be able to socialize with others. Though enrollment in both schools have continued to increase, observers say government should do more to increase their capacity to continue to provide conducive learning environment. In Lagos, Jane Ujuku. News. And from Kano State, Muhammad Rabi Ali reports that while old students of Unity Schools record their memories with nostalgia, uh, those still in the system are excited with the opportunity given to them to make new friends. The Federal Government College Kano, which was established in the 70s, continued to foster unity and cohesion among Nigerians. NTA News traced the registry of the school to affirm their attendance. This is the register of 1979 set. We have Adam Suleiman, the present Minister of Water Resources, uh, Air Vice Marshal uh, Christian Chuku, who retired. Uh, his file number is 500. From Anambra State, he was in Benue House. Samad Isia Kurabiu, he also uh, graduated from this college. Emir of Kano Muhammad Sunisi II was also a product of Unity School, though these are testimonies of some students at the Federal Government College Kano on national integration. My stay in FGC has been very good because I've been able to understand and mingle along in this college. And in fact, now we can even speak different type of language, like in Akwana, in Agajia. Now I interact with people like our head girl, now she's an Indoma girl, so I can speak Indoma, like Umaichi, Umaino, Umane, Ainya. Then, and I love our college very well. I pray that when I leave, I have, I'll come back and make the college more better. We will learn about them more. The atmosphere of learning remains one of the best for what is known for. For the likes of Gideon Uzo, and many students at the Federal Government College, they say Kano is their second home. Muhammad Rabiu Ali, NTA News. And from Port Harcourt, correspondent Onengia Fineface reports that regardless of uh, this laudable intention, there is a deluge of uh, demands for admission into these schools. Out of 247 students admitted into the Federal Government College, Port Harcourt, 12 states from northern Nigeria have only 13 students. The five southeastern states have 102 students. Southwest 11, while the south-south has 121 with rivers, the host state producing 78 students. The enrollment statistics is not much different in the Federal Government Girls College Abuloma, also in Port Harcourt. If you post a child who is from Port Harcourt, River State, to Bayelsa, the parents will come here crying that they want the child brought here. Then you can imagine bringing a child from Plateau, Sokoto, they don't even bother at all. Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Asher have five children, all of whom attended the Unity Colleges, but were enrolled into those in Imo State or Rivers, their states of residence. But the last one, at first, he passed at GC or um, Yola because of the situation. I couldn't allow him to go there. We need to actually see that we are all one under God and you know, accept one another. If the challenge of security, they say, is resolved, the idea of establishing melting pots for academic and moral trainings for all Nigerians, irrespective of ethnic background, will be achieved. In Port Harcourt, on Nigeria, fine face. NTA News.
watching We Can File on the network service of the NTA. Conversation on Unity Schools and National Integration uh, begins after this break. And of course, we're going to be hosting uh, Jonathan Mbaka, Director of Quality Assurance at the Federal Ministry of Education. We'll be back shortly. The entire people of Kebi State, under the leadership of Maishin Kafa, the Executive Governor of Kebi State, Senator Atikuba Gudu, are thanking Mr. President Muhammad Buhari and his entourage for coming to Kebi State for his campaign rally. Mr. President, we are solidly behind you to move Nigeria to the next level. Long live Nigeria, long live Kebi State. This message is from Buhari Atiku Campaign Organization. Al Haji Sani Dodudu, Chairman, Information and Publicity Announcer. <clears throat> Sore throats, it's often caused by bacteria and viruses. Feels like they're having a party. You need strep cells. It soothes the pain, plus, it fights the germs with two germ killing actives. Double power in one lozenge. Bye bye, Sore throats. Take strep cells. This is my PPA uh, that brought me to this place through uh, Empower uh, Volunteer. I was posted there as a class teacher. I teach, uh, I teach, I teach in primary six here. Yeah? So it is after closing by 2 p.m. that I have time to go to my uh, extensions, that is my, my, my planting, plantation, my uh, poultry uh, proposed sites. The test of government also means the levels of government, what do I call it? The levels of the government. The levels of government. The Empower 2016 said they work assiduously with us and they perform wonderfully well. Thank you. All right, uh, joining me now in the studio is uh, Jonathan Mbaka, Director of Federal Quality Assurance in the Federal Ministry of Education. Good evening and uh, welcome to We Can File. Thank you, Frank. Uh, thank you, uh, Kirian. Kirian rather. Thank you, Kirian. Right. Uh, Good uh, evening, uh, Nigeria. Uh, 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 all right. Now, you know, it became imperative uh, in the life of this history uh, for the establishment of a unity school. So I want to ask you, uh, are, are these schools still relevant in today's Nigeria? Yes. The Unity Colleges are still very relevant in Nigeria today. The founding fathers, in their wisdom, wanted young Nigerians from different backgrounds, ethnic, cultural, social, even uh, financial, to come together, learn together, play together, so that at the end of the day, they will understand one another, thus fostering uh, uh, national unity. And also, these schools are meant to serve as models for other schools to look at and follow. So now with the situation in Nigeria, there is even more need for fostering of this national unity today. And so these schools are still relevant as they were when they were first established. Now, you, you, you said something here, yeah, serve as models. Now, uh, have these unity schools lived up to that expectation? To a large extent, yes, they have. Because yes, I must, uh, I must accept that at a point, the standard dropped a bit. 
But with measures that have been put into place by government, the standards have risen again. And these schools are again uh, doing what they know how to do best. Now, from all indications, you know, from our, our um, interrogations, even from our reporters, you know, we've learned that uh, the, the quality of education now is, uh, is, is high. Right, yes. and uh, but the uh, issues arise as to why there is a uh, insecurity in some of the schools, so lack of uh, adequate infrastructure, dilapidated infrastructure, and what have you. Uh, so, how would students now who were there for national integration, fraternal relations, and unity, uh, how would they be able to study in such environment? It may not be all the schools anyway. Yes, uh, thank you, Kiran. Over the years, there has, to some extent, been some neglect in some schools. And because of funding issues, we find that the infrastructure started decaying, started going bad. And because there were not enough funds to maintain this infrastructure that were in place, they started to go down. Apart from that, we find that when these schools were, in, were initially conceived, the population they were to serve is not as high as what they are serving today. And why they have such a high population today is partly as a result of the fact that even Nigeria, we have had a huge uh, explosion in our population over the years. Now we are talking about uh, close to 200 uh, million people in Nigeria. You know? So there is this large population who want to go into the federal uh, unity colleges. And the truth of the matter is that the federal unity colleges are still the last resort of those who want good quality education at an affordable price. Now, if I may ask you this, now, are there documented evidence, you know, if you like, uh, to prove that unity schools have played a role in the promotion of national integration, which is one of the fundamental reasons for establishing them? Thank you, uh, Kirian. I happen to be a product of a federal unity college also. And there's no state in Nigeria I go today that I don't meet a classmate or a schoolmate. So anywhere I go, I feel at home. And because when this, uh, when this unity college started, you find that students were coming from all over the country. Every part of the country was represented. And so we were able to understand other cultures different from our own cultures. We were able to see and, uh, I mean, see and interact with people coming from different backgrounds uh, from us. So it helped. And till now, you, you find that if you go to a federal government college now, the admission basically is based on merit. That is the major uh, criteria for admission. But then again, we have the principle of federal character in Nigeria, which has to be taken care of. So you find that we have this 30% of the admission reserved for equal representation from the states, so that every state will have a representation in every school. All right, now, you know, we've just heard from, uh, from the reports, especially from Kano, you know, where some students, uh, very bright students, you know, were talking about the way they're learning other uh, people's languages and all of that. So that's uh, basically the national integration we're talking about from that age. All right, but you see, parents, let me take you back to the issue of infrastructure. Parents yes. are complaining bitterly about infrastructure, that in some schools, uh, the children defecate in the bush and, and, and what have you. So, and some have also complained of, um, you know, uh, uh, diversion of funds meant for infrastructure development in such schools because well, we learned that the schools are, uh, are being given uh, some amount of money to do this. Well, uh, what we do in the ministry is that we ensure that the people who are appointed as principals now are, are, are appointed purely on merit. And we ensure that very senior officers of integrity are, employed, uh, are posted as principals of these colleges. And... Uh, for the issue of, say, infrastructure has decayed, yes, as I said earlier, over the years, there was a bit of neglect. There was a bit of underfunding of the colleges. But now, government has taken up the mantle and is actually uh, spending money in these colleges. For example, last uh, 2017 and 2018 uh, capital appropriation, money was appropriated for the federal unity colleges, for security infrastructure, for landscaping and such things, so as to beef up what is already on ground and improve on, on it. Hey, you are a product of Unity School. Uh, when was the last time you visited your alma mate? And uh, could you tell us about the environment? <laughs> because, you know, you must have left that school so many years ago. <laughs> so what's happening in your alma mater? When I left my, my college, the entire population of the college was about 500. 
Now the population is about 2,000. So you can imagine 2,000 people cramped into facilities that were... No new, no, no new square, uh, structures to accommodate the, the, the intakes? Or? The, the new infrastructure that are there are not adequate for the population explosion. Is there any plan to make them adequate? That's the big question. Because this issue of integration national unity is very important. Very, and it very is when those schools are conducive for learning that you have more Nigerians wanting to go to school there. I just told you that 2017, 2018, money was budgeted for infrastructure in the schools. Even in 2019, we have uh, these same budgets. And what we're doing now is that as the money is being budgeted and released, we're also making sure that the projects that are being carried out are being effectively monitored. Is there any monitoring mechanism yes, established? Yes, there is. Yes, All right. Um, at this point, I would like to thank you, you know, for your time and uh, for educating us on this matter because the entry schools are very important to the development of the nation because of the integration aspect of it. Thank you very much indeed uh, for coming. Jonathan Mbaka, the Director of Federal Quality Assurance, Federal Ministry of Education. You're still watching Weekend Fire. When we return, we will take you on sports. I'm an only child and um, I grew up as such. Uh,